reality show tip. Get all the scandals out of the way in episode one. Hey guys, it's me, Takani, and today I'm going to be recapping Southern Charm Savannah, Season 1, Episode 1. Released in 2017, this show only ran for two seasons, but according to some Reddit posts, it's worth the watch. I'll be the judge of that. You could check the show out for yourself on Peacock for full context. Let's hop on this ferry and dive right into episode one. Welcome to Savannah, y'all. After a little preview, we start the episode at Nelson's house with Ashley and Catherine. They're drinking champagne and talking about the water. Ashley, of course, wore a swimsuit under her outfit, so she's ready to just dive right in. Listen, I get why people swim in ponds and lakes and other bodies of water, like maybe the beach, <laughs> but I won't swim in any water that's not chlorinated. And I also prefer it to be cleaned by me, because you don't know who's doing it right. So I just don't swim at all, because I don't own a pool. <laughs> I used to go to water aerobics all the time, and the last time I went, which was like a few years ago now, a man came out of the men's dressing room and walked right into the pool, and there was a used toilet paper hanging out the back of his shorts. So, yeah, I won't be going into any public pools anytime soon either. We then join Hannah and Daniel as they unload groceries that they brought for a meal that they're making. Daniel said it was $250 for the ingredients for this meal in 2017. Where were you shopping back then? I mean, now that's like a normal amount, right? Because <laughs> all the prices kind of got raised, but back then things were cheaper. I thought. Hannah talks about how everyone went to an expensive school, and she didn't go to that school, but she went to a school that she calls a sister of that school. Not nearly as expensive, but similar enough, I guess. Louis joins, and he's excited. He tells Hannah that he just quit his job so he could pursue his passion, and I bet you're wondering what his passion is. That's right, just like any other wealthy man, socks. Except for Craig Conover, where he did pillows. At least he was unique. <laughs> Louis's like, no more stocks. It's just socks. Which is not going to catch on anytime soon. Sorry, bud. Maybe it's because I wasn't born into money, but my first thoughts was, why not both? You can still have your day job and then pursue your sock thing until it takes off, like on the weekends and evenings. Like, I imagine he probably worked a nine to five. Like, this is Southern charm. Everybody was born of money there, so I'm sure he's not working weekends and nights at the local Arby's. You know that I paused the show to look up his sock business to see how well it's doing. And this is 2024, by the way. And let me tell you, his sock brand is called JL The Brand. I know, super catchy, right? I found the Twitter and the Instagram. And on his Instagram, his last post was December 2020. And his last post on Twitter wasn't even sock related. It was something to do with a car, but if you click on the link, it just says this is Facebook and it doesn't work. <laughs> so I don't know what it was really about, but judging from the little info snippet, it was something to do with a car. In their bios, both the Instagram and Twitter link to a website, jlthebrand.com. So I went to that website. Interestingly, it is a real website for an Indonesian lifestyle blog. It has nothing to do with socks anymore. So I'm guessing that sock business didn't go very well, did it, Louie? Anyway, let's get back to the show. Louis, Danielle, and Hannah cheers to Louis quitting his job to pursue socks in 2017. One of the things that he mentions later that I think is really funny is he said that by 2023, Socks is going to be a $23 billion business. Guess he didn't have COVID in his plans, huh? We cut to Ashley styling a photo shoot for her fashion line. Ashley designed for a fashion show at St. Andrews in Scotland when she was 16. She says that Kate Middleton was wearing her clothes when Prince William spotted her. I googled it, and Google does say that they met at that college. And one article said that Prince William fell in love with Kate at a 2002 fashion show. So that's cool, I guess. Ashley talks about when she turned 18, she left her home in Savannah, and she makes her own money. She doesn't live off of trust funds or her parents' money, like other people. She says she lived in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. But one day, she was driving around in Dubai, and the song Georgia On My Mind started playing. So she moved back home to Savannah, Georgia. Ashley has a husband, and they have a son together. Her son was born when she was 20, so she had him pretty young. All the photos Ashley took all come out great, obviously, because it's her thing. So then we cut to Catherine being hot and cold with Lyle. They've been together for 16 years, but Catherine doesn't even call him her boyfriend. Lyle says he specifically moved back to Savannah, Georgia 
to marry Catherine. Catherine says she's excited for Lyle to move closer. And then she talks about her childhood home and living there, and her parents moved into their parents' home. So I guess houses get passed down in generations. Must be nice. <laughs> and then she also talks about how she has an apartment in downtown. So she goes out partying and just stays in the apartment. Catherine is throwing a welcome home party for Lyle. And some of the guests show up to this party on boats. Like, I guess, yeah, they're on the water and everything. I don't know what I expected, but it's just so weird seeing people come up with their little, their mini yachts and stuff, just pulling up to a dock and then unloading. I've never seen that before. Like, just imagine arriving to a party on a boat. We again meet Nelson, who embraces his metrosexuality. He loves clothes, and he doesn't want to live by social expectations. Unfortunately, that means people just assume he's gay. Because a straight man can't love clothes, of course. That was a joke in case you didn't get it. He has a beautiful girlfriend, though. And for some reason, Ashley says she's seen some things that prove that Nelson is not gay. I don't really know what that means. And also, what's up with bisexual erasure? Come on, man. He could still be bi just because he sleeps with a woman. I'm not, I'm not questioning his sexuality. He says he's straight, so he's straight. But I'm just saying, like, you can like both. <laughs> Just because he slept with a woman doesn't mean automatically he's 100% straight. As they're getting their food and setting down, Ashley tells the caterer that she calls dibs on that pig head. Her and Dennis plan to bury it in the yard and let the ants eat the flesh off. Then they want to bleach it and hang it in their house with the collection that includes dinosaur poo. Yeah, that's right. She says she has dinosaur poo in her house. I don't know where you get dinosaur poo and wouldn't it have decomposed by now? But... Okay. Lyle calls Ashley creepy and weird in his confessional. Apparently he doesn't have the balls to say it to her face. It's high tide and Ashley's by some water. So you know she ran to her car, put on her bathing suit and hopped right in. Ashley says that she always keeps two bathing suits and towels in her car for a moment like this. She loves ending her night with swimming. Brandon is gossiping with Catherine and Happy. And yes, that's her name, Happy. And he tells them that he Googled Nelson and allegedly, Nelson pretended to be other people. Immediately they call Nelson over, and before he gets into his explanation, I went ahead and googled it just so I can get context myself. And of course, if you want to read all the sources that I found, you could just check the description. It'll be down there. I believe I found the article that he was referencing. So Nelson was allegedly arrested for wearing his uncle's congressional pen and claiming to be Georgia Rep Jack Kingston. Allegedly. He would parade around parties, lying to people, claiming to be Georgia Rep Jack Kingston, and handing out fake business cards. He even allegedly pretended to work for the embassy. The reason I'm saying this is all alleged, despite him saying he did it on the show, is because all of the charges were dropped completely. So he wasn't pursued in court for it. So it's all alleged, of course. It wasn't proven. Except for the fact that he said he did it on the show. For all of us to see. But that's up for interpretation. <laughs> Now let's go back to the show and listen to his explanation. Nelson's like, oh, I guess you're talking about me wearing a congressional pen and making a crazy comment to a policeman. I didn't read about a crazy comment. Tell us more, Nelson. <laughs> Brandon responds just like me. Oh, I didn't read about that. In his confessional, Nelson said that he went to the Bahamas and claimed to work for the embassy, but it was all just performance art, allegedly. It was performance art, of course. Definitely when I'm pretending to be other people, it's performance art as well. He then tells the group that he was on page six, and any publicity is good publicity, of course. He follows that up with the acknowledgement that he can get a little mouthy, and it is what it is. And we'll just leave it at that. The party is coming to an end, and you know Ashley is swimming around in the water. She's wearing like an all white one piece swimsuit and i guess it's see-through because when she gets out of the water they blur her nippies i kind of thought that swimsuits were designed to get wet so it's weird that it getting wet would make it see-through is she sure that this was a swimsuit and not like just white lingerie i mean what else do people swim in that isn't wet money maybe do rich people swim in money does that even work or was spongebob lying to me in her confessional, Catherine makes a comment about Ashley always taking off her clothes and how it's a trend with her. She continues saying that you don't do that when you're an adult and you're married and you have a child. Because everyone knows that once you have a husband and kids, you can't have fun anymore. That's disgusting. Petit. Catherine then finishes her comment in the confessional as if she didn't just say all that to say, get it girl, you do you. Like that doesn't change your judgment. <laughs> but okay, fam. 
Also, Catherine, what do you know about being married and having kids? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Daniel tells us that he started working for his family law firm because his dad got 77 indictments. His dad called him up and was like, hey, I'm going to take a plea bargain. I'm going to be in jail for a year. Can you come down here and run our law firm? And Daniel did. He left Colorado for Savannah, Georgia, and he's been running the law firm super successfully. Now, about the indictment charge, which, again, you can read my sources down in the description. According to FBI.gov, he was facing charges of an alleged scheme to embezzle more than $950,000 from employee pension benefits to provide retirement benefits to present and former employees of the I. Schultz Law Firm, allegedly, from 2001 to 2008. And then According to WTOC.com, Eichholz pled guilty to obstructing a federal investigation of embezzling money from employees' pensions held by his firm. As part of the plea, the government dropped 76 of the 77 indictment charges, so he only faced up to 21 months in prison and $75,000 in fines. Daniel claims that he found out after this that his family actually wasn't wealthy, and he had to work his butt off to afford food just to eat. After Daniel ran the firm for six years, it is more successful than it's ever been, and Daniel tripled it in size. Catherine, Ashley, Hannah, and Happy all go out for drinks. Ashley then gets a call from her son saying that their house is on fire. She obviously freaks out and leaves immediately to go get there. The rest of the ladies get a to-go cup and follow closely behind. Apparently Izzy's bed got caught on fire and Dennis's legs were badly burned because he was trying to put it out. As Ashley, Dennis, and their son are driven to the hospital in the ambulance, Hannah holds on to Ashley's dog for her. Then it ends the episode with Hannah saying, what do we do with the dog? I don't know, dude, just watch it. <laughs> You've never been around a dog before? When Hannah did try to pick up the dog, though, he went off, so she put him back down real quick. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me on this recap of Southern Charm Savannah, episode one. I feel like they just addressed all the lawsuit drama in this episode, so people won't really talk about it and they don't have to bring it up again, which I guess is fine. I mean, the only interesting thing was Nelson allegedly, you know, being a, pretending to be a congressman. That was kind of wild. <laughs> like, who goes around and puts on a congressman? Like, it really gives me Real Housewives of DC flashbacks. <laughs> like, which, if you haven't seen that, you should go watch that. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> But anyway, what did you think of the episode? Let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like or dislike the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.